Hey everyone, welcome back to the daily segment. Today, again, I'm joined by Neto from our growth team, um, and we're continuing our series about how segment uses segment to build segment. We heard about how we instrument segment with segment for product analytics and usage data, but Neto, I know your team's been doing some interesting stuff with visibility into bugs and triaging bugs, using segment for that, not a traditional use case. What's going on there? Yeah, so basically what we're trying to do is that we're trying to find a systematic way to reproduce unreproducible bugs. And how does segment help with that? Like, how does tracking help with that? Mm -hmm. So if you think, uh, if we like take a step back and try and think of like bugs in the context of any app, yeah. one of the biggest challenges that anyone who's trying to fix a bug uh, often faces is like, how do I reproduce these bugs? Got it. Like, how, how, do I, I, how do I get the context yeah. on what's going on, right? Okay. You sometimes get a bug report and it says the app's broken or the app's crashing. Yep. I try to go to this page and it doesn't load. But then as an engineer, the first thing I do is try and load that page and it works. suddenly works for me. Yep. And yeah, basically the idea is like, how can we get as much context information as possible? Got it. So are we are we tracking crashes now? Like, well, basically, I'm curious functionally mm -hmm. because typically I think of the things that I pass into track calls are events about what users are doing uh -huh. in signups. How, like, are we tracking uh, crashes? Are we tracking bugs? How, how are we getting this visibility? Yeah. So uh, basically what we're trying to do now is like, we want to quantify how affected uh, our customers are by mistakes that we make or even some ways where our app misbehaves. Sure. Or someone sets out to try and finish a task yeah. and can't finish that task. Got it. So I basically um, just like laid out this three sort of categories yeah. of like bugs of when things are trying to happen. One way that I like to think of bugs yep. is in this three sort of like different categories. Okay. One of them is what we call like a crash. So uh, say you're visiting a website, you try and load a page and boom, it blows up in your face, you get like a blank screen and you don't really know what's going on, you know that the page is blank. Got it, so it's like a 500 server error, yeah. or there's some but fatal JavaScript error. Can't see anything, yeah. and there might be a stack trace or not. Okay. And then there's the second category of, um, of bugs that internally, if you've used the segment app, you may or may not have run into this little scenario, it's like what we call the, the slot of death. <laughs> and how is this different from a crash? Uh, it's basically, Think of like when you're using Windows XP or Windows 95 way yeah. back in the day, yeah. and you get the blue splash screen sort okay. of thing, right? It's when uh, we know that the app that you're using recovered from that error, but it really didn't recover. Yeah. It's just like, it's stating the obvious. It's like, a hot exception, but not yeah, actually handling it. It's not being handled, or it doesn't help you finish the task you set up gotcha. to do. Okay. And then, we started to track all of these errors and we started to observe these sort of patterns that are like coming up. Yep. And then we found that there's actually a third kind of category that turns out that it's like kind of like encompasses these two, but it's actually even more important. That is what we call it today a transactional error. Okay, and how is that different from the first two? Yeah. The way I like to think of a transactional error is when there's very clear intent and someone's trying to finish a transaction or a task. Yeah. So in the context of segment, you might be trying to set up a Redshift warehouse. Yeah. You're filling out the, the feuds and then you hit save and the app blows up okay. or the app says like, oh, your warehouse settings are invalid. Or maybe it does nothing and you're clicking that button, but behind and the scenes, like just behind the scenes, working. that transaction is not okay. uh, working. So got it. We started tracking all of these errors and look it's it's really fascinating how these sort of like categories started to emerge. Got so it. we started really high level with like a crash. Okay. And then as you start to look into the data, you start to see all of these patterns kind of like emerging from there. Got it. So where were you looking at that data? I mean like traditionally, you know, there are definitely crash and exception tracking tools, but what sets segment apart from those? Like why were we using segment to track those crashes instead of you know, there's bug snag, error section, sentry, uh -huh. lots of different tools like that. Sure. I think uh, the way that I think uh, of this is like, there's like some incredible tooling out there 
there um, some people were building some like really good, really really solid stuff. Like we use Sentry, and we're we're big fans of Sentry. Yeah. And what we found, like we also used like I've used New Relic in the past. Mm -hmm. We've used logs, just like raw sure. logs. I've like everyone's read raw logs and all of that stuff. The one of the things that we learned is like one of the most important things when you're trying to debug something is to actually have a way to kind of like time travel into that moment okay. and understand the entire context of what was going on. That makes sense. Right there. So one of the things that you have with like every tool out there is that like they give you their perspective yeah. of that data. They give you the insight that they can get from like the data that you can Context. Okay, like for sure. the context that they have. Yeah. So when you think of something like a uh, tool like Sentry today, it will give you a bunch of stack traces it's one of the best tools out there for you to get stack traces, but that's basically what you got. It's right? so they're focused on, on like the actual line errors. of code yeah. and like trigger actually, this. Okay, yeah, sure. When you think of like certain, say you're doing some tracking the data dog, yeah. you know that a certain event took place at a certain point in time. Yeah. And then, well, the sort of patterns that you start to see with all of these tools is that like they're giving you their perspective, they're giving you the data that it can give you. Yeah. But you don't really have that power to slice and dice the data agree anyway that's want. the feeling I've always had is like you, will, you come up against this wall where you know there's something wrong and you've diagnosed a problem but yeah. you can't get to the root cause because the property cardinality is too high or there's some restriction yeah. like this in the tool right yeah. so what like are we using redshift then to, to try yeah. and get that or um, how do we use redshift as a warehouse here's, here is how we how we approach that. yeah here's where uh, I think like things got really interesting. So like, we set out to try and get as much context as we can get okay. around every single bug. Gotcha. We want to be able to quantify how many bugs we're seeing, when they happen especially, mm -hmm. and to whom. Okay. We want to understand who are the people who are experiencing all of those crashes. So we want to get the full story. We gotcha. want to get the full context. Yeah. And then you start to think of like, I want to know, and I want to know now. I want to know exactly when it happens. Mm -hmm. So I want this, like a bunch of components, right? Yeah. I want as much context as I can get. Yeah. And that's like, who, when, is when, and what. Yeah. And what happened. And we found that like not every tool gives you all of this stuff. Got it doesn't it. give you the profile or persona would like that yeah. person seen was like or when or what or they do some sort of weird roll ups that like yeah. by day or by week. Sure. And then you want it to be as real time as possible. Because you want to understand like the events, you want to understand the entire environment. So we started to think like, well, we have all of these tools already. We're just like not uh, mixing them together. We're right. just not this combining is sounding, all of this. this is like a sales pitch for a second, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. So like, and that's when you start to realize, like, if you look at our catalog today, if you go to the second catalog and see all the stuff that we do there, you see that we we have a bunch of tools there, and yeah. like a bunch, all of this information is being collected somewhere. Right. We're just not using all of like the power that they provide. Got it. So when you we started with like I thought pretty hard, but like we were like thinking about like how do we collect all of this stuff, and it turns out that you already have all of this stuff in the browser mm -hmm. if you're building a web app. So why not combine them as early as you can and then just like send them down later for processing? Yeah. So the th what happened to us is like we when you think of like the analytics JS, we had a few integrations that were already set up for us, yeah. right? So we used to load Sentry as an integration. We used to load uh, Full Story, which I find to be like an incredible tool yeah. for uh, debugging to and understanding that entire context. Yeah. We had all of the segment stuff like user ID, yeah. uh, their traits, ID, their traits sure. everything. Yeah. And then there's some really other interesting things that the browser tells you too. So okay. it's like, What's the time zone that that person is in? What is the URL that they're visiting? All of this stuff that you already kind of get for free, yeah. or like AJS. So the moment you start analyzing URLs, you can actually start figuring out like which features gotcha. are being affected and which paths of your app are like the hot paths for, yeah. for error, right? So when you think of all of this, this is already available on the browser. Yeah. So what we did here is like let's build that entire context that we're looking for and send it down like through segment. 
Excellent. So here's your track event right there. So basically, today, we identified all those hooks in our app yeah. for when, like, when the app crashes, when you try and finish a transaction and that transaction um, fails and you have a transaction error. Sure. We take a snapshot of yeah. everything that was happening at that place. And it's awesome like that all of these tools and uh, things that are available in the, in the browser, you can actually take a snapshot in time. So what we do with Sentry is we grab the ID of that crash that was just reported yeah. through Sentry. When you think of full story, they have this really awesome API that lets you take a snapshot of that point in time. Okay. So say the the bug, like you ran into a crash right now, yeah. say it's like 3.30 p.m., yeah. you say full story, give them a snapshot of what they were doing okay. at 3.29. Yeah. And like start that story there. And so now you're, you're also, so, once you get that context from full story, you start including it in the event, and now the full story link is available everywhere else. Yeah, right? exactly. So you get this like so, cross-pollination of context. Yeah, almost. when okay. I think of like the tooling that I have today, yeah. I could go into the segment app, pull up my favorite feature, the debugger. I love the debugger. <laughs> I love like how amazing like real-time all of these things are. Yeah. And I can actually start to see my crashes come in. So That's pretty cool. I'm using I'm using the app. I can start to see exactly what's going on. Like if there's ever a bug or anything coming in here, I get this entire picture right away. Gotcha. So it's not it's like these tools were giving us like all of those amazing like views into the data. Yeah. Even though like they were a little limited, yeah. we can actually now tie all of them together Got it. and look at that entire story cool. and start to make sense of the context. That's amazing. I think if I were to wrap this up a bit, you know, Segment is all about helping you create amazing customer experiences by better understanding your customers and the context in which these actions they're taking are happening. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Traditionally, when it comes to thinking about web app monitoring or error handling or logging, these are all discrete concepts. You use a different tool for a different thing, yeah. and that's fine because you should use the best tools for the job. Exactly. I've always been somewhat loath to recommend that you use Segment for machine data because we are so user-centric, but as I've come to realize that logging, metrics, these things are made better yeah. when they're tied to users. Exactly. And it helps you to actually triage, you know, if a business to your customer or lots of our customers are, are experiencing a bug versus one that maybe only a few customers have run into and they're free plan customers, you know, we love our free plan customers, but in a prioritization case, you're going to make that call, right? So, uh, yeah, I think like the lessons that we learned when yeah. we started. So, this is fun. This is fun, right? This yeah. is like to me the fun part. It gives me the real time of like what's going on. Yeah. But where we we saw like some massive value, yeah. or at the moment, and this is where I think like this sort of infrastructure really shines is that now I can look at all of it and slice and dice and start finding patterns. So, yeah. like the moment we hooked all of this thing up into a warehouse and we're using Redshift yeah. in this case, we started to see all of these events pop up on the warehouse. So when you're using a tool for like reporting like mobile analytics or yeah. anything looker. like that or looker, yeah. you can start building your reports now and like start breaking these things down. We, we now yeah. have like fine-grained reporting to um, understand which features are the most broken. Right. So you start to see all of these clusters that start to show up, and we learned that there were some uh, kind of like fundamental like uh, problems with the sort of like architecture that we had okay. for certain features that we had, and sure. like by just looking at those clusters, we got context and information that we couldn't get for any of those other tools in isolation. Got it. And that allowed for us to like improve like the user experience dramatically. I love it. Just like anything else, I think like having you know sort of a multiplexing layer. And having structured data gives you option value to use the right tool for the job, exactly. jump between these different contexts, but carry carry a lot of context with you as you do. Exactly. Uh, cool. Well, Neto, thank you for sharing. Hopefully, sure. you all have learned something from this. I think you know this kind of data is not traditionally what we talk about sending through Segment. So give it a try. Tell us how it works. If you're already using Segment for these use cases, I know I've talked to some of you who are. Let us know in the comments below. Uh, and if you have any questions, and we're happy to answer. Uh, thank you. Thanks, bye.